talk to me I really wanna know what you Hey everyone, happy Thursday. I hope you guys are doing good today. Oh my gosh, it's a lot going on and we are definitely going to get into it. Make sure y'all's hands are raised. I want to hear from teachers, people who work in the school system. It is a lot. A lot of things have changed even from the time, you know, when I was in school and I just had to give my hat up to these teachers. They are going through a lot. And we're going to, you know, we're going to get into that. But before um, we even go there, I want to let you guys know that this is the last official um, Green Room show. If you guys do not know, we have been using the Spotify Live slash Green Room since about 2021. And um, we tried hard to make it pop, but it looks like only the tea sippers, <laughs> the tea sippers really had this app lit. Um, this app, unfortunately, they will be shutting down at the end of this month. Um, it hasn't been too much engagement. And so they are going to close it down. But I love this. I, I love the app. Um, I love coming on here once or twice a month, you know, listening to you guys, allowing you guys to speak and get things off your chest and give your opinions. So, yeah, the Spotify Live app will be no more as of April 30th. Um, I worked really closely with the team and they were a bunch of really great developers and guys. And so it's really sad for me as well. Um, I love the Green Room song. I'm like, dang, where else can we play the song now? Cause that's one of like, out of all my theme songs, it's probably one of my favorite theme songs. Um, so yeah, enjoy us while we have each other. Um, right now we have over 600 people in here. So shout out to everybody in here. I thank you guys for joining me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot going on. I am trying to work on creating a new app um, to do something similar and I will keep you guys posted. But in the meantime, we're gonna, you know, have a good conversation and rock out like we always do on Spotify Live. And just, I want to thank, you know, the guys who made this app for all their hard work because us tea sippers, we really enjoyed it. So if you guys do not know, there is a huge teacher shortage going on. A lot of teachers are quitting in droves. Teachers are fed up with misbehavior. As you guys know, I have family who work in the school system and you know, it, it's been a lot. <laughs> we went through a lot, you know, these past few months. If you guys are in the Discord, you guys know, you know, what all happened. I'm not going to talk about it on here. But um, it was a lot, a lot of very emotional days. Um, these kids are off the chain. It's a lot of stuff going on. And it's not just here in Minnesota. It's in Florida, L.A. It's just all over the nation. So I want to go ahead and play you guys um, a clip real quick of a teacher in Florida talking about why he's fed up. Anything that you're not able to hear will be in the post-production, but I'm going to go ahead and play it right now for you guys. I actually got to speak with a few teachers. One of them actually decided to go on camera with me, but they all tell me this. It's one of the most difficult times in their careers. Wow, this is always a tough job. Brevard County High School teacher Dan Bennett says the word frustrated doesn't cover it. He's been a teacher for almost 30 years. These days, he says they're spending more time disciplining students than teaching them. There are just so many, so many issues and behaviors that we're dealing with right now, uh, and it, it, it does seem to be getting worse. The chairman of the Brevard County School Board tells me 42 teachers and eight bus drivers have quit since school started in August because of students' misbehavior. Board members are afraid more will quit too. Get out of my face! Here is the latest example. A few weeks ago, middle school students sent us a video of a Brevard County bus driver yelling at kids while they asked her to let them off. The hysteria started when two kids began misbehaving. <laughs> Brevard County Sheriff Wayne Ivey promises to get tough on students who get out of hand. If you're a little snot that's coming to our classes to be disruptive, you might want to find someplace else to go to school because we're going to be your worst nightmare starting right now. 
Parent and child psychologist Christy Salina says some students need better resources at school and she believes bad behavior issues may start at home. How many have an individualized education plan in place or have been identified for, you know, trauma issues and are getting access to school counseling? Um, you know, we need to ask questions uh, like why. At this point, people are looking for answers and uh, we don't have them yet from the district. All right. So you guys just heard a snippet of that clip. On top of that, you guys, though, we posted video that's literally gone viral on my Instagram page of um, teachers and students fighting. I believe it was a month ago, we had a young lady fight her teacher and she literally broke the teacher's leg. Very disturbing video and I'll put that in post-production. On top of that, yesterday, there was another fight that went viral. I posted on Discord and on Instagram. I'm sure many of you guys saw it. There was a substitute teacher. She took one of the students' phones and the little girl got upset. She wanted her phone back. She took a swipe at the teacher and the teacher instantly just started fighting her. They were bombing. All of a sudden they fall on the ground and all you see is two giant rump roasts, okay? All you see is the teacher's ass cheeks, okay? Hanging out of her damn skirt. And I'm like, there's so much going on here. First of all, teacher, where are your panties? Let's start there. Second of all, how did it even get to the point where you have teachers and students rolling around on the ground? Like, I just, I don't understand it because, again, I come from a day and age where there was a certain level of respect when you saw a teacher or even an elder. You know what I'm saying? There was no room to even get smart with your teacher. Even if you were having a bad day, you knew how far you could take it. And from what I'm hearing in the schools, it's crazy. You can tell some of these kids good morning. They will cuss you out, call you out your name. And as a teacher, you're supposed to just take it. And at the end of the day, we're all human beings. And I remember when we were growing up, I think one of the issues, too, from talking to family members of mine in the school system is that there's no more consequences for a lot of these kids. And you have a lot of these kids who are professional disruptors. They love drama. They love chaos. And there's no more in-school suspension. When we were young, there was ISS. So if you wanted to be disruptive and disrespectful, you got sent down to ISS, which was in school suspension. And you sat there for a whole hour, nothing to do. All you had was pen and paper. And that was it. Yeah, they got rid of ISS. Um, there's no after school detention. I remember getting after school detention in the eighth grade um, and I had to find a way home. I had to basically beg my principal for a dollar to get on the city bus to go home because there was no one to pick me up after school. So guess who never had after school detention again? Me. Because there were consequences if you acted up in the classroom. None of that is available. Um, so what's happening now is that you have the inmates, quote unquote, the students running the asylum. And these teachers, there's nothing they literally can do. Kids can have cell phones in class. They can wear baseball caps. I remember being sent to ISS because I didn't get a chance to do my hair. I was running late and I grabbed my baseball cap and I wore it to English class. And my English teacher told me to take it off. And I was like, no, I'm not taking it off because I didn't do my hair. She said, if you're not going to take off your hat, go down to ISS. And rightfully so. So I went down to ISS, the most boringest time of my life. And guess who? This was freshman year. You know, freshmen are always crazy. This was freshman year. Guess who never went back to ISS after that day? Me. All I needed was one time to go to boring ass ISS. Guess whose hair was done every day after that day? Mine. Why? Because there were consequences. And in this day and that, in this day and age, there's no consequences for these kids. You know, when you're young, of course, you make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Just like myself. Like I said, I went to ISS before I had after school detention. But because of those consequences, it made me want to do the right thing because I knew if I had more after school, you know, detention, there was nobody to t come pick me up. I couldn't get on the school bus. I didn't have the money to be riding the school bus unnecessarily. I mean, the riding the city bus unnecessarily. So this is not just going on in the classroom, but also on the school bus. And it's to the point now where bus drivers that I know who drive the school bus, they're not even allowed to kick the kids off the bus anymore. Before, if you acted out on the bus, you would be suspended off of the bus. You'd be kicked off for a few days and your parents had to find a way to get you home. OK, yes. Uh, somebody also mentioned Saturday school. We also had Saturday school 
in back in the day. There's no more Saturday school now. In a lot of schools, there's no Saturday school. So there's no consequences. So if you would get off, kicked off the bus, your parents would have to find you a ride. Well, now they're saying, oh, you can't kick these kids off the bus. You know, they're poor students. Their parents are struggling. So now there's no more kicking kids off the bus. So these kids have now just ran amok. So recently we have posted a viral story of a school bus driver who was at her wit's end. And she basically cussed out all of the kids and ended up quitting. And she was an older white woman. And of course, I've noticed when it's older white teachers or older white bus drivers, because it was one a few years ago, who go crazy and snap, there tends to be a GoFundMe for them at the end of the rainbow, right? There's a GoFundMe, people feel bad, they're held heroes. But people like my family and others, just hardworking teachers, there's no pot of gold for them when they're abused. There's no pot of gold for them at the end of the rainbow when they go through traumatic experiences with these students. And my heart goes out to people who put their, you know, put themselves on the line because they're there because they love the students and they want the best for them and they end up hurt on the job. We've seen videos um, of this huge kid. He was like six foot four who beat up a female teacher because she took his Nintendo DS or Nintendo Switch. You know, so this lady lucked up. I'm going to play a snippet of her video right now. I don't give a fuck if you're my daughter or not. You're not going to talk to me like that, you dumbass bitch. You're not going to talk to me like that. Bitch, you not going to talk to me like that. You're not going to talk to me like that, you dumbass playing my bitch right now. You need to get her a country. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> A high school student will face criminal charges for phys physically attacking her teacher. Justin, this is something everybody was talking about today. Students, teachers, and of course parents have their opinions. We spoke to parents on both sides of this. They have some very interesting opinions. We also spoke to a witness who saw it all. Heritage High School students had their phones out Thursday. While this ninth grader and her teacher got into an argument that escalated to an attack. Oh my God. Punching her. Okay, is that girl in jail? Students told me she was transported to the juvenile detention center and a Rockdale County School District Administrator said that student will face criminal charges. After this parent watched the entire video that shows the teenage girl get in her teacher's face, then put her hands on the teacher, she said there's never a reason for things to go this far. And all these other kids, they should have got up and done something. I mean, why you let them treat a teacher that way? We got permission to speak to a student who saw the whole thing. Was it scary at the time? It wasn't scary, it was shocking. She's a pretty good teacher, but how she talk, I'll say she talk with aggression. How she talk to kids is not a proper way to talk to them. His mother agrees. What I think the problem is, is the teachers are not taking a class to how to deal with children. You have to learn uh, de-escalation techniques to help those kids versus aggravate a situation. Tonight on News 5 at 11 about the Amherst School District investigating a video that has now gone viral. It features one of its bus drivers. Now in that video, the driver pulls over her school bus and proceeds to use inappropriate language, even obscenities directed at the students on board. It was cause for concern for some, but not everyone felt that way. Tonight, for the first time, we hear from the bus driver at the center of it all who says she is shocked by the amount of support she is receiving since this incident. News 5's Jesse Schultz has more. My foot's going to be so far up your... This video has been viewed nearly three million times, showing an irate Amherst bus driver screaming at students on the bus. I'm ready to walk off this bus right now and let you people walk the... Home. It's the opposite of the Jackie Miller who sat down with me Friday evening. It is out of character for me. She's been a bus driver like for 15 board. years, the last two with Amherst schools, and says she loved her job and her kids. They were so much fun. I got to spend just a few minutes every day with them, but I, I, I was lucky because I had great kids. Excuse me, what did I just... But claims what you saw on that video was the culmination of a year's worth of frustration. Frustration, she says, she asked school administrators to address. 
my requests for help were ignored. Miller says it all stems from a small group of junior high students who consistently bullied other students, were disruptive and distractive. And Wednesday, she snapped. This was my breaking point. The video blew up. Some parents were appalled by Miller's actions, calling her unprofessional and out of pocket. When you threaten physical violence against children, you lose all of what you were going to say. Miller resigned that night, suspecting she would be fired. It was definitely the right call on getting rid of the bus driver. But what she never expected, the majority of parents and strangers who supported her. Hashtag team bus driver. People like Jackie Adkins. People have bad days. I've had bad days. And I think that's what everybody felt in that moment when they saw that, is that they felt for her. Who is the owner of Mistake on the Lake Apparel and who made part of Miller's rant into a shirt. She's going to get around $5 a t-shirt. And people like Jeff Grob. I just thought, man, we got to help her because I'm sure there's more to this story. Who started a GoFundMe page for Miller's retirement fund. The page has surpassed $15,000 in less than a day. There needs to be more uh, ability for these drivers to ha discipline the kids so that it doesn't escalate to this level in the future. Miller says she apologizes for her actions, but does not regret them and hopes her breaking point is a turning point for school districts. Parents, teachers, administration, they must step up and support bus drivers. Reporting for News 5, I'm Jesse Schultz. Such a response to that. All right, so y'all just heard a snippet of that video. So as you notice, it these kids are getting younger and younger. A lot of people think that it's just the high school kids. Oh, I have friends who work in junior high. And these damn sixth, seventh, and eighth graders are off the chain. Okay, um, so she snapped. And a lot of people on social media really supported her. She, I think she got like $30,000, $36,000 on GoFundMe. You know, and she lucked up because a lot of people, a lot of teachers, especially teachers of color, they don't get that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You know, so the disrespect is happening in the classrooms, on the buses, just overall. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.